This is a Fox News alert. We've got the results from the 2012 presidential straw poll at the Conservative Political Action Conference in Washington, CPAC. And the winner is Ron Paul. <laughs> Sounds to me like the revolution is alive and well. Conservative Political Action Conference in Washington, D.C., in the corner of this hotel where the true lovers of liberty congregate. It is my job to defend freedom, to defend your natural rights, and to defend your right to have a government that stays within the confines of the Constitution. Somehow it's a little bit easier to do that today. Shortly before he died, Thomas Jefferson lamented that the long march of history would see an increase in government, an increase in order, and a decrease in human liberty. Are we living proof today, Professor Woods, that Jefferson was right? When you have a system in which one entity gets to decide for itself what its powers are, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to suddenly decide that it's got a whole reservoir of unspecified powers. 1994 and we took over the Congress and that of course was very good and that was designed to limit government but government kept growing also in the year 2000 we had a remarkable event something that hadn't happened in more than 40 years it was probably 50 years where there was a Republican president a, a Republican Congress a house and a Republican Senate but we didn't get the revolution uh, things have gotten progressively worse especially since the the United States embraced the socialistic welfare state domestically, uh, the interventionist economy, the drug war, and then, of course, imperialism overseas. When George Bush was running, guess what he ran on? And guess what he won on? He was running against an interventionist foreign policy. He was running against uh, Clinton's policy of intervention, nation building, and the policemen of the world. And he was elected on that. There's nothing wrong with being a conservative and come up with a conservative belief in foreign policy where we have a strong national defense and we don't go to war so carelessly. What is not conservative about saying don't go to war unless we go to war properly with a full declaration of war and no other way? There's a change that we want that we haven't gotten yet. I, and I see uh, what, what our problems are in philosophic terms, not in partisan terms. As Randolph Bourne said, war is the health of the state. So if you like small government, you need to work hard at having a strong national defense that is not so militant. Personal liberty is the purpose of government, to protect liberty, not to run your personal lives, not to run the economy, and not to pretend that we can tell the world how they ought to live. After the Civil War, the federal government became the, the arbiter of the limits of its own powers in the Supreme Court. But the Jeffersonians always argued that if the day ever came, that the federal government would become the sole decision maker with regard to constitutional issues on the, regarding the limits of its powers, that it would soon have no limits on its powers. How are we going to pay for it? It's driving us to the bankruptcy. We are now spending $1 trillion a year to manage our world empire. We're in 140 countries, we have 700 bases, and quite frankly, have you noticed the debt is exploding? You can't double the money supply and not uh, expect some really big events within inflation. But back 100 years ago, especially Ron Woodrow Wilson, what happened in this country is we took freedom and we chopped it into pieces. We 
don't think of freedom as something unified. There is only one kind of freedom, and that's individual liberty. Our lives come from our Creator, and our liberty comes from our Creator. It has nothing to do with government granting. But I do not believe freedom can survive, and I do not believe we as conservatives can contribute much if we still think freedom only comes in pieces, that you can protect economic liberty but not personal liberty. Sure, I imagine everybody in, the, in this crowd would say, yes, protect our right of free speech, protect our right to our religious value. But as soon as it comes to putting something in your mouth or in your lungs, you say, you don't have enough sense to decide what you should do. So we are going to use the heavy hand of government to come down and protect you against yourself. I believe we're on the verge of something very significant. I've spoken out quite a few times on college campuses in the last couple of years, and the reception is fantastic. And they want the whole package. They don't want bits and pieces. They want their personal liberty. They want their economic liberty. And they don't want dependency on the government because the government has failed and they know they're not going to get their social security. And they don't want perpetual war. They'll defend this country. I have more support from the military than any other one candidate during a campaign. But who was it that coined the word the military industrial complex and beware of it? It was Eisenhower that told us about that. The crash that I was predicting and talking about and said we were on the verge of and we were beginning, it came. And then all of a sudden now, Fox News Networks had me on their TV about 60 times since the campaign was over. <laughs> Let's take this opportunity, and though for those of you who disagree, all I ask you to do is think seriously about it. Think about it and read about it and study it and put it in context. But uh, I would say this is a grand opportunity for all of us to come together because something is brewing. Something is brewing big. This is a different year than anything we have ever experienced before. Believe me, by the end of this year, I think this country is going to be a lot better off. Jacob Hornberger, are we witnessing in this building and around us a battle for the heart and soul of something? The conservative movement, the Republican Party, the Tea Party groups, whatever it is that we're trying to get our finger on. There's no question about it. They're, they're... Americans are trying to save our country, and you can see this resurgence of interest in the principles that were being debated in 1787, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. But right here, what we're talking about in this room, are the seeds, the core, of what needs to be done in this country. It's not just preach the mantras, it's talk the talk and walk the walk. Buddy, you're a young man, hot man, shouting in the street, you're gonna take on the world someday, you got blood on your face. A big disgrace, waving your back.